Welcome back, my dear light bulbs, to another Hell's Paradise review. If you're new view to my channel, remember to subscribe to become part of the light bulb army. So let's get right into it. Now we have some crazy battle: Roku Rota versus Gabi Maru and Sagiri. And this battle was insane because we actually got to see Roku Rota's backstory in this. So ever since he was a baby, Roku Rota was seemingly strong. A little bit intelligent as well because as a baby he was stacking rocks together i know you might be like how is that intelligent he's a little he's a baby balancing rocks together right so we saw that and we actually find out that roku rota the giant of ebizen he actually was always hungry ever since he was a little kid and it looks like he slaughtered his entire village now i'm guessing the reason he did this is because he was hungry right and he wanted food no matter what maybe there was a time of famine maybe there was low food storage in his house low food and he literally just killed everybody he killed his parents he killed the villagers probably stole all the food he always wondered why did nobody want to play with him growing up and most likely the reason for that is because he was just so strong and could hurt anybody very easily. Or maybe he hurt people before without meaning to. So he became more of an outcast in his village. But that was not the motive of why he did all that. I think he did all that and killed all the villagers and stuff because he literally was hungry. And yeah, how a kid grows up into a giant of a man like that we have no idea this is hell's paradise this is anime so we are not going to question it right so so far in the series this is gabi maru and sagiri's toughest opponents not even the monsters that gabi maru was taking down gave him this much of a challenge because gabi maru was using a technique where he made his cloth as hard as steel didn't do no damage to roku rota he was using rocks, uh, uh, projectiles at, at him, throwing it really fast at Rokurota, no effect. And the thing is, these rock projectiles, we saw that behind Rokurota, there was a tree and it had a giant hole in it by one of the rocks that hit the tree. So these projectiles, let's just say, are as powerful as bullets and it did not do anything to Rokurota. So it goes to show you how strong physically Rokurota is because even attacks by something that should be as hard as steel did not affect them, right? But it's good that Sagiri got her head in the game, a uh, high school musical reference right there. And she actually was able to slice off one of his fingers. And basically, as an ex executioner, she said, you know, she knows the limbs and stuff. So there's parts in the joints and stuff you could slice off easily, right? And she had to remain calm. She's rank 12. We got revealed that she's rank 12 in the Asayamon, but that's primarily because she's a woman, so that lowers her rank more. Now, even Santa, I said, I think I said Santa. I think his name is Santa. Even Santa, the other Asayamon, I think he's rank three. He was saying if it wasn't because Sagiri is a woman, like she her rank would be higher, basically. So she has a lot of skill when she's calm, cool, and collective she could execute right now just because the monsters in the island scared her doesn't really mean much like Senta was saying in this episode but when she's concentrated when she's 100 percent uh yeah she she's she's very very dangerous to the point that even gabi maru uh before in other episodes acknowledged her strength so they take down uh Rokurota by Gabimaru spamming uh, fireball jutsu. Now let me stop playing. He was spamming his nimpo fire attacks uh, and the carbon monoxide made Rokurota have carbon monoxide poisoning, couldn't breathe, had to uh, nail down and once he knelt down, boom, his head got sliced off and he could finally rest in peace. And Sagiri said, you know, even you deserve to rest in peace even after the heinous things that Rokurota did, right? And like, we know Gabi Maru is not no holy protagonist, not no, uh, he's a good guy and stuff, 100%. Because at the end of the day, Gabi Maru has killed hundreds of people, so he's not called Gabi Maru the Hollow for nothing. But Gabi Maru has definitely changed from his prior way ways. He still will kill, you know, to survive, to go back to his wife, but it's not like he's killing for money or anything like that. Which, I'll tell you the truth, uh, you might be like, that doesn't make it any, any better, but. 
when you're in the island of Shinsenkyo, yeah, it's either kill and survive or just die, basically, because it is no in between in this island. This island is just purely crazy. Now, we got some very interesting information. Towards the end of the episode, uh, Senta Yusuriha. Yeah, that's her name. Yeah, I always, I always be no, I always be saying her name, but I be thinking it's wrong. But no, uh, Senta Yusuriha, uh, Gabimaru, and Sagiri all see a village. So there's a village there, and I guess in the folklore and stuff, or in the religion, uh, they're like they're supposed to be some elderly men there in Shinsekyo instead of monsters, right? So I wonder why the monsters are there, and these elderly men. Uh, they're like, oh, let's find them and beat them up, right? The thing is, we haven't seen no elderly men. The first human-looking characters we have seen that are from this island, and we know they are from this island it, because they were not on the ship or anything like that. There's no records. They're, they're, they're samurai. It's two women, right? So I still have the episode open on Crunchyroll. It's two women, and the group that actually finds them is Shobei and Toma, the two brothers. And let me just say, Shobei will survive by any means necessary. He will adapt to anything because he's literally said, as a mountain bandit, you know, for water, we just used to drink the fluids of animals. And, you know, the monsters, he considers them animals, right? So the one that's, that talks about the hermits is actually... Toma, he says, it's supposed to be hermits, not monsters that live in Shinsenkyo. Shinsenkyo. I said the name wrong earlier. Sorry about that. And the funny thing is, Shobei says, sounds dumb. Just kill the old farts and be done with it. Like, that's his way of thinking. He's just like, kill everything. But something interesting is that Shobei feels a princess of something. They go towards it, and it's a blonde girl and a pink haired girl eating and like a fruit from the island and there's uh like the seed of the fruit and they're just kissing each other and they're seeing this and they're also um yeah they're also barely wearing any clothes right so they're making out and then they spot Shobei and Toba now there's i think this is going to be very interesting right because first of all who are these women that's one. Two, they're in this dangerous island doing this. That's two. Three, are they natives of this island? Most likely. And if they are natives of this island, which they most likely are, how in the world are they just right there doing this? Uh, how are they surviving in this hellish island with all these monsters and stuff? This is going to be really interesting, and I cannot wait for next week's episode because I just feel like some craziness is going to happen, right? Are they combated? Are they uh, friendly? We will see because they just stared at uh, at them because they were find out. But it wasn't a stare like an evil looking stare. Actually, no, it was it was like a threatening stare. It was like a stare like what are you looking at type stare. So this should be interesting. This is really very interesting. This anime is still on the high horse. I'm really enjoying the series. This episode was really great. Got me wondering what in the world is going to happen next. Uh, like I said before, I I don't think all these characters are going to survive, right? But, you know, there's some groups I'm a little biased to towards. The group of Gabimaru, obviously, and... The other group that I want to survive, I like Shobei and uh, and Toma's group, and I also like Noodle Guy's group as well. So mainly Noodle Guy's group and Gabimaru's group. Now Shobei and his brother die. It will suck because they're interesting, but like I said, it, 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 this ain't this ain't Pokemon. Everybody can just have a happy ending, right? So overall, I'll give this episode a eight point five out of ten. Hope you enjoy this one, and remember to have a great day. Peace.